evening all and welcome to a video that is about Kerbalism but isn't actually part of my series. Um, an episode or so ago I mentioned that I was modifying my Kerbalism profile to speed up the production of liquid fuel and oxidizer and um, I said I was going to put it in the description for download and I didn't because I wasn't happy with the numbers in it. I basically changed the um, water electrolyzer to use 10 times the amount of water and the processes that produce liquid fuel and oxidizer to produce 10 times as much but all the numbers in between were still the same so the hydrogen the ammonia all that stuff was all wrong i've since done a fair bit of research on what the actual processes are that are involved learnt an awful lot about what goes on in the background of kerbalism particularly and um have adjusted the numbers to make real world sense while still fitting in with Kerbal Space Program. The idea I've basically wanted to do was I would like the small chemical plants to be able to fill a orange fuel container in about one week, about seven Kerbal days. I don't know if it is a week in Kerbal because there's 400 and something days in a year. so. I'm not sure, but um, yeah, seven days. Uh, I think I've got it to about eight and a half days at the moment, and that's where I'm going to leave it because all the numbers make sense with real world things, and I shall get into that in a moment. But first, let me say you don't have to watch this video if you're not interested in the science or the numbers behind it. Um, to quite simply have my profile if you want it, you can download it in the description to this video, uh, put it in your Kerbalism. Uh, profile your game data Kerbalism profiles folder in uh, your KSP uh, installation and in the Kerbalism folder there's a file called settings.cfg if you open it up you'll see right at the top it's got a system uh, sorry it's got a a line called profile and uh, just change that to KYCE K -Y -C -E, that's the name of my profile and um, then when you reload your game it will use the profile that I've got instead so nice and simple so let me get into the numbers behind what i was doing here right first and foremost there are a couple of assumptions that have to be made kerbal space program simply uses liquid fuel and oxidizer to make rockets go and it uses monopropellant to use rcs it doesn't actually tell you what they are rocket fuel is a complicated thing and over the many years of space travel in real life it's changed. It's been all sorts of weird stuff. It's been uh, kerosene in its early life. It's been um, liquid hydrogen at some point through there. It's been hydrazine. It's, it's been many different things depending on which way around you um, do it. Basically, whoever was producing the rocket had their own version of using the fuel. Rockets were obviously designed off the war, off of World War one i believe and refined during world war ii um they were war pushy technology that's a, a sad fact about the human race but that's how it works and um at the time obviously i think when they were using kerosene it was the most obvious thing they could use it, it burnt you mixed it with liquid oxygen and it produced lots of flames so yeah they used that as we've gone on we've refined fuels to be a bit better and a bit more efficient um i think spacex uh uses something different for their one i believe they started off using kerosene and went on to using methane but i'm not 100 percent sure about that i can't find the information now but um but anyway turbo space program as i said uses liquid fuel and oxidizer to make rockets go kerbalism uh shotgun ninja who do who made kerbalism has made the assumption that um liquid fuel is methane the oxidizer is um, hydrogen peroxide, I believe. Uh, yes, hydrogen peroxide. And monopropellant is hydrazine. I don't know much about chemicals, so I'm not gonna go into details about them, but they're the, the three um, fuel types that they've used. And the numbers that you put in for the chemical plants or ISR used to convert them will be based off of these chemicals. So, what I've done is I've uh, luckily managed to find a website called 
converterunit.com. This website lets you enter in a chemical, so you can type in water for instance, and it will give you the molar mass of that chemical, providing it recognizes it. Um, a mole uh, is, one mole is equal to so many particles of carbon-12. Um, I'm not sure where the basis come from, it's, it's a scientific thing that I don't understand, to be quite honest with you. But um, basically, it gives it to you in grams. It tells me that water, which is H2O, is 18.05128 grams per mole. So that's what I based everything off of. Um, water obviously being two hydrogen and one oxygen. Hydrogen is quite light, it's 1.00794, and oxygen is a heavy one, it's 15.9994. So, the way I've done it with Kerbalism, with the um, the plants, is all based off the little black chemical plants, it all started with that. I aimed to have the chemical plants fill up a orange tank in about seven Kerbal days, about a week, although I'm not sure if it's seven days per week because there are 400 and something days in a Kerbal year, so I don't know if they have weeks or months or whatever, I'm not sure, but anyway, um, the way I've done it is that the water electrolysis, the process that breaks down water into hydrogen and oxygen, um, it takes in water at um, uh, one gram a second, I think it was. Um, no, sorry, I took the um, the weight of the um, the, the, the water, which was 18.01, and uh, divided it by a thousand, because that's how many grams are in a litre. So that was my sort of baseline for there. And um, uh, put that in, so every second, the water electrolysis plant would take in 0.018 0.0152 units of water and it will produce 0.0021588 units of hydrogen and 0.0159994 units of oxygen. That is the exact conversion, that's a 100% rate conversion. Now nothing in real life is actually like that, you don't get 100% conversion rates, but um, Kerbalism, I'm going with that with Kerbalism, it's, it's, everything is 100%, there's nothing wasted. But that's kind of the point of what I was doing here. I wanted to make sure that nothing was wasted or magically gained. If you break down one water molecule, you will only ever get back two hydrogen and one oxygen. Nothing more, nothing less. And that process carries on for everything else. Um, the um, Obviously it goes from the water into hydrogen and then hydrogen and carbon dioxide um, would be taken by the saboteur process and they would be taken in equal amounts which is um, what's required to make the liquid fuel which is our hydrazine um, no methane sorry methane um, the it would take in um, one carbon dioxide molecule and four hydrogen molecules to produce one methane and two oxygen that's the exact mix, that's how it all works. So everything's equal, everything's based upon that. That makes sense. Obviously it would take one water in and produce two hydrogen and oxygen, and then uh, the same tea process takes in carbon dioxide and four hydrogen to produce one unit of methane, which is our liquid fuel. Uh, the anthraquinone process, I hope I'm pronouncing that right now, uh, takes in one hydrogen and one oxygen and produces um, half a hydrogen peroxide and the reason I've divided that one by two is because um, the way the system works is it would produce slightly more liquid uh, if it was set to standard where it would take in two hydrogen to oxygen to produce one oxidizer you'd fill up the orange tank in half the time and uh, you'd have loads of oxidizer left and no liquid fuel so I've divided that by two and, and taken in only one hydrogen and oxygen to produce that. So it um, sort of matches up. It, it goes slightly faster than liquid fuel. It's not the magical 1.22 number that it should be. 
Um, all tanks hold 1.22 the amount of oxidizer than they do with liquid fuel. So it will take a bit longer to fill up that oxidizer than liquid fuel. But being as lots of stuff is going nuclear, at least in my game, that's not a bad thing. Liquid fuel is more important to me than oxidizer. So yeah, quite happy with that. Um, and hydrazine, which is our monopropellant, um, is uh, takes ammonia and hydrogen peroxide to produce oxygen, hydrogen, and hydrogen. So yeah, but but everything makes sense. Whatever it takes in, it produces out in the same quantities. There is no magical gain or loss. Everything's a hundred percent. There are some assumptions here, obviously, as um, I may have said. The only one that I've had to make up is the waste. In Kerbalism, it's just called waste. It's Kerbal poop. It's waste. It, yeah, I don't know what, what it actually made of because I don't know what Kerbal would eat. They just eat food and water and produce waste. It's, yeah. So, for the waste incinerator, I had to try and make up what waste was based on the output that was already there. And um, it will produce carbon dioxide, water, and a bit of electric charge. The electric charge is based off of a turbine, so that's free. Um, but to produce carbon dioxide and water, it needs to take in a bit of oxygen, which is obviously burnt. And the waste has to have something in it. It's got to have hydrogen and carbon in it. So, waste is some made up chemical called H2C. Two hydrogen uh, particles and one carbon particle in the poop. And um, that then is taken in along with three oxygen and produces one carbon dioxide and one water. So yeah, that's it on there. I think what I've done there is, I think one oxygen is actually removed during burning for that process there. That might, the numbers might be right. I'm looking at it and I can't get my head quite around it, but um, yeah. So that's what I've done for my profile for Kerbalism. I thought I'd just explain it a little bit and uh, see whether the numbers make sense to anybody else. Um, I know uh, Chris Evans in the comments of the previous videos has helped me a lot explaining how uh, or where these things work. So I, I knew that Kerbalism had profiles, I didn't know it was as detailed as this. Um, and it's not as easy to make your own profile as you'd think. You've got to change quite a few things in here, but um, I definitely recommend having a look. Um, make a copy of the default one and um, just have a play with it, have a look, see what's going on to it. Just remember that if you change the name at the top to your profile, uh, you have to scroll down through and you'll find, um, during the parts places, you'll find uh, an option where it says uh, needs profile and it will say default by default. You need to change that to your one, your your profile name. Uh, the easiest way to do it is if you're using Notepad++, it's just control and H, Type in default and then type in your profile name and it will change it all for you. Do remember, the profile name right at the top of the list is case sensitive. So if you use a capital letter up there, when you change it in the settings to do Kerbalism, you have to use a capital letter there. Um, I had issues with that when I was changing it and it, it, I don't know what I did wrong with it, but it wouldn't do it. And then I know it's the case mattered. I'm not sure why it matters. I know, obviously it's based off the Unity game engine and maybe that uses case, I'm not sure. C++ does use case though, so, but I'm not going into that. Just make sure you follow the correct case there. Um, although later on when you get to the parts, it's a capital letter and at the top it's not. So yeah. The other things that I haven't changed are obviously the scrubber, pressure control, waste recycler, water processor, that sort of thing. Um, I left them exactly as they were because they work and I don't want to, I don't want to do anything wrong with them if you know what I mean. I don't want to change anything that's going to go terribly wrong. Um, as I'm actually making this video right now, I'm going to make a small change to my profile as well, um, which will obviously be in the one that you can download from here. I've just noticed um, in the waste compressor, it says dump equals false. Now, one thing I've noticed about the chemical plants, any of them, is that if you're already full on liquid fuel and you tell it to run, 
it will take your hydrogen, it will take your carbon dioxide and it will produce nothing. If you're full on oxygen and full on liquid fuel, it will just use that up and it will disappear. So I'm wondering whether dump equals false actually stops the process from running. So um, I'm going to do that. The Sabatier process, the anthroquinone process, and the hydrogen process, I think, um, shall have dump equals false all written on them. And um, if see if it stops once the tank is full. That's what I want to find out. And here we are, just doing the last bit of testing before we go live. Um, the actual ratio of chemical plants you need now is three breaking the water down to one of each producing the fuel. Otherwise, you're just going to get um, an over overrun of oxygen and uh, not enough hydrogen because numbers. Um, so yeah, you have to have three breaking down the the water. But what I'm hoping. Is as soon as the liquid fuel is fuel, full, uh, this process here, I believe, is the one, um, will stop. It will it will stop and it will go, right, I now need to produce, I, I, I've got nowhere to put the stuff here, so I'll automatically stop. And this one will kick in because it's going to get some spare hydrogen. So, that's the plan. Let's have a open these ones up here. It's about to fill up. And it does. It does. It's a miracle. So in the options, if you set something in the, in the profile, sorry, if you set something to dump equals false, as soon as it's got nowhere to put anything, it will just stop. That does mean, however, that if you've got one of these plants doing multiple things, like um, producing uh, oxygen on the side, as soon as your liquid fuel is fuel full, it will stop doing that. And um, yeah, this does mean that I can add the force to these as well. The chemical plants producing the hydrogen and uh, oxygen. So that once the hydrogen tanks are full as well, it won't use any more water. So yeah, that's, that's all good. I am happy with that. I'm happy with the profile and um, I will have it linked in the description below. Um, I'll have a little texting saying how to do it as well in case you've not seen it in the video. But um, yeah, yep. overall I am very, very happy with the changes I've done to Kerbalism. It's a fantastically customizable mod, which I really like. I really like the fact that you can just edit it how you want. So if you wanted to go in there and just set the numbers to 10 times the amount, you could have it use a drop of water and create a ton of liquid fuel if you wanted to that's entirely your choice you could also change it up completely to say that it's going to produce liquid fuel from the air for instance so that's entirely your choice you can do what you like with it it's all in there it's all in the settings i would suggest not changing the default profile so you've always got a backup of where to go to and i would always suggest backing up everything anyway just in case and just as the sun is coming down, um, our oxidizer is full. And you can see the hydrogen and oxygen are now rising quite nicely. Um, so these two plants are now not doing anything. They've completely stopped their process, which is brilliant. So I am happy. So thank you for watching. Um, I know this isn't the normal sort of thing I do and I don't think I'll be doing many of these sort of things, but I just thought I'd explain the processes behind what I was doing so it all makes logical sense um, it, it all makes sense in my head anyway but I just wanted to to get it out there so you can see what I've done and the way I've done it so you can sort of understand that it's all still you know it all still makes sense all the processes are perfect logical working sense so yeah thanks for watching and um, as always have fun